There's a lot of Marvel and DC coming in 2022. In today's video, we're ranking my most anticipated projects of the year. What is up, Marvel and DC fans? In today's video, we're taking all 17 projects that are coming from Marvel and DC this year, movies and TV shows, and ranking them by my anticipation level in tier list form. Austin, how does this work? We're going to get into it, but if you guys are here, please leave your lists down below out of all of these projects. Which is the one and what is your top 10 list? And if you like these videos, I plan on doing more things like this. Drop that thumbs up down below. It tells me you'd like to see more. Let's take a look at these tiers. And since we're ranking by anticipation, I wanted to switch things up. So here is what each tier is titled at the bottom. These will be the movies that I am just not interested in. Now, again, I love superhero properties, so it's going to be hard to make it on that tier. On the next level, we have, we'll see, films that I'm hesitant about but could get excited when we see some more material for. Uh, then on the next tier, I have the movies I am hopeful for. I am hopeful these films are going to be good or at least have the potential to be good. And then we have films that I just can't wait for. I cannot wait to see what these movies have to offer. But there is a tier above the rest, and that is... I need it! These are the movies I need. Do you really need them, Austin? Is it a requirement for you to survive? Yes. Yes, it is. Then, of course, at the end of the video, we're going to rank them by anticipation levels. But let's start early on in the year. We're going to move chronologically here as good as we can. And that, of course, is this one. Get this one out of the way early. Guys, I need it. I actually need this movie. Okay, not necessarily, but it's one of those films that I've just been looking forward to for so long, even before they cast Robert Pattinson in the role. But as soon as we learned what this movie was going to be and saw that Matt Reeves was taking it over, and then just the other night heard Giacchino's score for the very first time at full length, and it's on YouTube right now if you guys want to listen to Batman's new theme, it's beautiful. It's already in the conversation. Now, I have to hear it in context, and I have to see the movie at 2 hours and 55 minutes length. That's what we were told this week, and it's a long one, right? So, my automatic concern is, is it too long, or is there just enough story uh, to tell for that period of time? So, all of these things being considered, I'm excited about the tone, what the story is going to be. It's been my most anticipated since before it was moved to this year, Please don't move again. Let the Batman dominate the month of March, guys. I cannot wait for this film. Justice! What's looking like could be Marvel's version of Batman in a way, of course, very different character and uh, dealing with different things, but the darkness that we don't often see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that the Moon Knight trailer had for me is something I am oh so excited about. Oscar Isaac looks Brilliant. The trailer itself, and this is one of those TV shows that could come out and I thoroughly believe shock a lot of people with how dark it goes because at its core, that's the character of Moon Knight and that's the character that I really want to see fleshed out on screen like we saw him in the comics with the potential of bringing in some of these other dark characters in the future. Uh, we know that eventually we could get a Blade or Ghost Rider. I still think this is the first time we're going to see Mahershala Ali drowning out the outside noise. I want this to be a character piece. Not only do we have Oscar Isaac in the lead role, but Ethan Hawke looks to be this cult-like leader. Everything about this show is speaking to me easily, one of my most anticipated of the year. And uh, like SpongeBob said... I need it. So Moon Knight, the end of March, March 30th, and Jared Leto's Morbius, the beginning of April. April Fool's, everyone. Not necessarily. Well, the April Fool's joke may just be the fact that he's in a different universe than we all could expect. We'll find that out when the movie comes, but as of now, I thought the trailer looked better than I anticipated the trailer to look, but I still don't know if I'm sold on this film. There are so many elements going into it, whether it be Sony's track record with these types of movies. Now, again, I have fun with the Venom movies, so this being kind of the same type of movie, maybe even darker than that film, and an offshoot of the Spider-Man universe, all of those things have my interest peaked to a degree, but at the same time, there's so much going into this that could push it in the bad direction. I may be a bit more nervous than I should be at this point. And we just have to see how good Jared Leto is in the role. So as of now, I'm putting Morbius on the we'll see tier because we'll just have to see how it goes. 
On May 6th, we have Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, and uh, the madness is real, folks, especially after Spider-Man No Way Home. And who knows who's going to pop up in this film. We're getting rumor after rumor, and I don't know if you guys saw the cast list that was going all over Twitter this week, and it told us that Ben Stiller was returning as his character from Night at the Museum. It just People were believing it, too. I don't know who's going to be in this film, but we do know that there are going to be various aspects of the multiverse at play, and I am convinced that we're going to get some other characters that we've seen before, uh, not just those new characters being played by new people. Maybe we get the X-Men, but what I want is Sam Raimi to come into this universe and leave his mark, whether that be with the story or just the visual style that he always holds and makes so evident that, hey... It's me, Sam Raimi, and he's really good at what he does. So I'm excited to see how this plays out, how the multiverse goes, and if this is truly on that Avengers level of madness. That's why I'm going to put it on the I need it tier. Because again, I need it. DC's League of Super Pets. There is no denying that this cast is fairly stacked. From The Rock to Kevin Hart, and we're getting Crypto the Super Dog and all of these super pets. But at the same time, I look at this and it kind of feels like the secret life of pets, combined with some great things about the DC Universe, and I don't necessarily even think this movie's going to be bad. It's just one that isn't trying to appeal to me, so this isn't me saying I think the movie's going to completely... No, I, it's going to be fine for what it is. It's going to be great for kids. Now, if it goes beyond that and appeals to adults as well as kids, then I think it could be one of my bigger surprises of the year. But as of now, just seeing the trailer and what's rumored to be going into this film, I'm going to throw it on the not interested tier. It's dropping May 22nd, 2022. It seems harsh, but it's just not one that I'm all that excited for. July 8th, Thor, Love and Thunder. If they do this right and they take this story from the comic books and execute it in a way that not only, I don't want to say redeems Natalie Portman's character of Jane, but uh, brings her some new life, kind of like Thor Ragnarok, and Avengers Infinity War, did for Thor himself. That's right, after Thor The Dark World, it was just kind of like, okay, Thor's coming back. But after Taika Waititi, okay, Thor's coming back. And now he's coming back to direct this film. And I'm super excited. So whether it be handling Valkyrie in a way that establishes her as a more prominent presence, weaving in the Guardians of the Galaxy, bringing in somebody like a Christian Bale, a Russell Crowe. This cast is going to be crazy. This movie's going to be crazy. It's becoming a little top-heavy, but let's throw Thor Love and Thunder on the I Need It tier. How am I going to rank these? There's no date for She-Hulk, but it says mid-2022, so that's why it's kind of mid dull of this list. Uh, Tatiana Maslany looks incredible as this character. And just that little tease we got in the Disney Plus uh, trailer, if you will, breaking the fourth wall, the integration of Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, or, you know, even Abomination coming back into this series. I hope they introduce some things, maybe even throw us into a World War Hulk at the end, and uh, the rumors of Daredevil being a part of the series. It makes sense, because they are both lawyers. There's a lot that this show could do right, and there's a lot that this show could do for the character of She-Hulk, someone I've always been interested to see translate into live action. I just didn't know if they could pull it off, but they've pulled off things like this so far, and if the tone is right, this could be one of the biggest surprises to come out on Disney+, Plus. and I can't wait to see it. That is why I am putting She-Hulk on the can't-wait tier. Uh, I'm really excited for this character. Next up, another show coming in mid-2022, that is Miss Marvel. Now, this one's interesting to me because it is a coming-of-age story at its core, but it's also a character that, from what I've heard, they're changing some aspects about, mostly when it comes to her power set. I'm intrigued, but at the same time, kind of scared uh, to see how they're going to make those changes. If they can pull it off, it can be a really sweet, almost comforting show, like what Hawkeye was at times. So I hope it's on that level, but I love the casting. I think the story could be genuinely sweet. I'm excited to see how this leads us into the Marvels, the Marvels, Marvels. With a coming of age story, we've seen them crash and burn before. It could go one of two ways, but I am hopeful this show will be good. That's why I'm putting it on the hopeful tier. On July 29th, we have Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Black Adam, and there is a little fear for this film because I don't know how dark they're going to go. Black Adam has always been a character that is way more antagonist than pro. He could play it like an anti-hero, or he could be 
the villain. And what's he say? The hierarchy of the DC universe is going to change? Well, let's hope it does. Live up to your promise, The Rock. Listen, I think this little teaser that we got was really cool. And I am so hesitantly excited for this film. But at the same time, my excitement level continues to rise the more I see from it. And most of it comes down to passion from The Rock. And that passion is even getting me way more excited. And really to see where he fits into this universe. But beyond that, to see his impact on the universe because he's promised us multiple times and this guy was cast I mean, this guy was cast what 10 years ago as this character and we're just now getting to see it at this point after all the delays and the madness i'm gonna very hesitantly put this on the can't wait tier because i just want to see what he's going to do with it he's been promising us this for so long and he fits really well as the character so Let's see what he's got. October 7th, Across the Spider-Verse. Hey, really quick, if you guys are here, again, thank you so much for joining me. If you want to drop your thumbs up to support this video, that would be awesome. Be sure to let me know in that comment section, how do you feel about this list so far? What is your most anticipated? Where does Across the Spider-Verse fall? I don't need to say too much because this is one of those films that looks just as wonderful as the first. And even, what was it, last week they came out and said, each universe that he goes to will have a different art style and different animation. I'm like, I'm sold. I'm sold. And I kind of got that from the trailer, but when they came out and said it, say no more. Miles Morales, his story is not done. And this is a part one. So the fact that I'm this excited for a part one and just all of the effort that I know they're going to put into it, all the new characters, Oscar Isaac again, uh, but this time as this version of Spider-Man 2099, I, I just can't wait to see what they do with this story. I'm really intrigued to see what villains are going to be a part of this uh, Spider-Verse film as well, and which versions beyond the ones that we know. Yeah, do I even need to? I don't need to say it. I need I need this movie. On November 4th, 2022, it is The Flash. Now, I'm going to spoil my thoughts on this one. I can't quite put it on the I need it tier just yet. And here's my reasoning. There is a hesitancy with this version of the character. I started to really come around on Ezra Miller in Zack Snyder's Justice League, but even then, there's still that Wally West quality to him to where he's maybe not as serious as Barry Allen can be. We know he somewhat is what he is in that film, but I need to see it. I need this movie to prove to me that Ezra Miller can do it. I'm also a little concerned because, from what we've heard, there is no reverse Flash in this movie. It looks like Ezra Miller is playing maybe that sort of character. We'll just have to see. So they're changing some things up. But what has me like, oh man, this could be great. It could be one of the best superhero movies ever. Michael Keaton's return as the Batman. That entire universe that they're going to explore. Ben Affleck one last time. All of those things, and of course, I think the Flashpoint stuff is going to be cool. All those things have me excited. I need to see more than just the trailer we got. I need to see a bit more of the story itself to put it on that level, but it's not coming out till November, so we have plenty of time to get excited. I'm going to throw this on the can't wait tier, uh, but just know maybe another trailer. We'll bump that a bit higher. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. My hesitancy comes with the question of what do you do now? What do you do now after Chadwick Boseman? Uh, again, my Goodness, it's going to be so hard to watch that film. Now, hopefully they're going to give us some beautiful scenes at the beginning explaining all of that, but how does the mantle get shifted and passed on to what I believe to be multiple characters? Not only Shuri, uh, but maybe M'Baku and maybe some of these others. We've heard a little bit like maybe Michael B. Jordan comes back as Killmonger, possibly flashbacks, but who knows? I've also heard that there's potential for Namor in this movie. Just a lot of things they, they can do, but we don't really know too much about it just yet. Now, as much as it's getting delayed right now because they just halted production again, this may not even come out this year. So everything I say may be void. But if I trust anyone to do it, I trust Ryan Coogler. And that is why I am hopeful that this film is going to be great. Now, again, it's not... As high as the others, I understand that, but this is a huge task for anyone to take on. I believe the movie's going to be good, but there's also that part of me that thinks, uh, you know, I don't want to put it on the Will C tier. That's way too low because the first movie was so good. But Ryan Coogler, can, can you write this story in a way that brings everything together? I think he can, and I'm hopeful 
that this works out. I'm a bit skeptical of season two of What If because season one gave us a handful of episodes that I just wasn't the biggest fan of. Uh, now, the ones that were good were really good. The Doctor Strange episode, The Death of the Avengers, I enjoyed the zombie episode, so they stand out as some of the best Marvel content from last year. But at the same time, the ones that were too rushed or maybe felt too a bit, eh, I, I carry that hesitancy into season two. Now, I'm still excited for season two, but I want to know what the stories are. What stories are we tackling and what's the tone of each story? So I really do, I need an idea as to where we're going to go with season two. Still excited for it. Again, I thought season one was super fun. So because of those things, I'm going to throw it on the hopeful tier. It's less so we'll see because we've seen it before and a lot of them worked out well. Uh, more so that we get the stories that are really impactful. Austin, what is this? What? What's the little boy with antlers? Well, Sweet Tooth was actually a DC project that came out last year. And we don't look at it as an easy project. I could have called this the superhero movie list, and then I wouldn't have put it on because he's not a superhero. But Sweet Tooth is one of those shows. If you haven't watched it, this post-apocalyptic series, kind of following a pandemic of sorts, but the fallout of that and this young boy and his crew going on this adventure after what happens to his father. Beautiful series. Awesome series somewhat dark. I mean, it's on Netflix, so you're actually, you have a darker tone than really most of the stuff that you see on this list. And because of all of those things, uh, I can't wait to see what this show is going to do. Going to throw it on the can't wait tier. If you haven't seen season one, you probably don't care. But if you have seen season one, most likely you enjoyed it because it's a super high quality series. I can't wait for season two. Secret Invasion, it says late 2022, uh, so it's a little bit further down the list. Uh, Nick Fury, The Scrolls, possibly a Captain Marvel. We possibly see some new characters that we've never seen before. New cast members, which is great. Uh, someone like Olivia Coleman. Man, I can't wait to see her in the MCU. My goodness. So I don't know exactly how they're going to handle this story because in the comic books, the scrolls are impersonating characters that we know. And they have been, for some of them, for quite some time. Now, I don't know if they're going to go down that route, but Secret Invasion could eventually lead to some sort of war, a secret war of sorts. And to know that something massive could be on the horizon that could spawn, or at least continue to spawn, in Secret Invasion. And just to know what Nick Fury has been up to and who these new characters are going to be. Uh, what Ben Mendelsohn's role is going to be, because I, I love his character. I just... I don't know what we're going to get with Secret Invasion, but the magic's kind of in the mystery. That's why I have to say I can't wait for Secret Invasion. As soon as I get a trailer, that could go even higher. The first Aquaman was somewhat divisive, to say the least. Uh, James Wan's hand in that movie was, you know, incredibly obvious. There were so many stylistic elements about the film. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. But it's not standing out as one of my favorite comic book movies of all time. But there's no denying the success of the first Aquaman, both financially and its very hardcore fan base. And I respect that. I really do. Now, this second one, I've seen the photos. I just don't know exactly where they're going to go with this. And that's why my anticipation, and there's just, there's just so many other superhero things coming out this year, but my anticipation level hasn't hit that point just yet. Now, it could, but I want them to do a few things in this sequel just a bit differently. Maybe scale down the cheese a tiny bit and go further into what makes Arthur an intense, a hardcore, well, a Jason Momoa-like character. And I believe James Wan will do that because I know as a filmmaker, he can't wait to explore him even further and bring us so many new elements that could work so well. And I, I just think the title is cool. And the Lost Kingdom. What kingdom is that? Is it Atlantis? It's not lost. I can tell you where it is. Uh, as of now, I'm going to put this on the hopeful tier because I'm hopeful it's a really solid sequel. And finally, we won't talk about it for too long. It's the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, because is it a movie? Is it a TV show? It's a special. Why did I put that on this list? I don't know. It, it gave me something else to talk about. Uh, with this one, you know, it, it'll be good. I think it'll be good. Will it be the Star Wars Holiday Special? Or will it be like the recent Lego Holiday Special, which I actually thought was uh, pretty good. So with this one, it could be really cute. But because it is what it is, I'm going to put it on the Wool C tier because, you know, 
We'll see. All right, now it's the point where we rank these films. And sorry, DC's League of Super Pets. Uh, what am I saying? It could be cute. Uh, in front of that, we have the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. I'm going to keep Morbius at the top of the Wolf C tier uh, just because it could be really good. Then we have... Um, because you kind of know what we're getting, I'm going to put this at the bottom of the hopeful tier, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Followed by Miss Marvel, and then right in front of that, we're going to keep Aquaman. And, um, hmm. Yeah, I think I was a little too harsh on Black Panther Wakanda Forever because I was about to say, I can't wait to see what Ryan Coogler does. Uh, so I was teetering between the two tiers either way. I I'm going to put it on the can't wait tier. We're going to switch things up here just a little bit because even though I am very skeptical to see how that story is going to continue without Chadwick Boseman, I still can't wait to see what Coogler does. So, uh, yeah, I I'm feeling pretty good about that. Followed by Sweet Tooth, we have Tatiana Maslany's She-Hulk. And then uh, let's go Dwayne The Rock Johnson's Black Adam. There is a lot of anticipation there for that series. Secret Invasion, as soon as we get a trailer, it could go higher. But I have to put The Flash at the top of the Can't Wait tier. Um, very interested to see what they do with that film. At the bottom of the... I need it! Tier, we're going to go Thor, Love, and Thunder. No marketing, uh, except for a couple of photos, so we need more from that. Ooh, this, ooh, y'all, this is getting really tough. But I'm going to have to put Moon Knight right in front of Thor, Love, and Thunder. Still love the trailer, though. At number three, we're going Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, only because I love me some Spider-Verse. Soft spot in my heart for that film and that franchise. Can't wait to see the new one. But, uh, y'all, I mean, do you, do you need an explanation? I don't think you do. I don't know if this is going to end up being one of the better, one of the best. It could be a disappointment. Regardless, I love the character of Batman. I've loved the trailers. I've loved the score. I love everything I've seen. I love my pop figure, so I can't wait to see the Batman. All of these films, TV shows, they could be something great. And you know what would be funny? If we end the year and DC's League of Super Pets is my, my favorite movie of the year. Number one over everything. You never know, and I'm not throwing any of these away. I can't wait to see how each one plays out, what the box office is like for all of the films. But again, I need you guys in the comments and letting me know what list should I tackle next. I'm working on a very special video right now revolving around Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin and why I believe he's one of the best supervillains of all time. It's something different, so if you guys want to support anything over the next couple of weeks, when that video releases... I would appreciate it, or just some feedback to let me know if you like that kind of thing. Regardless, thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you soon.